Okay, so we're talking about traffic today, and we've already talked quite a lot about multiplicity and the difference between offering one thing that combines other things and splitting up all of those things to multiple messages. And I want to go into that today in a bit more depth and look at how it applies to, to marketing and sales and how it applies to traffic. So we're going to look at broadening your reach of what you offer. How do you actually go about putting out these multiple messages? One way to look at it is to ask the question, what are you really selling? Because it's very easy for us as web designers to say, well, we sell websites, we sell e-commerce sites. But in actual fact, a lot of the people who come to you may not be looking for a website. What they're looking for is something that a website is going to deliver for them. The website, in a way, is a means to an end, but it's not really their ultimate motivation. Fundamentally, nobody really sells products or services. Nobody really buys products or services. What you buy is what that product or what that service means to you. What does it mean to your life? What's the value in your life? How is it going to make your life better? And we can get very hung up on features with things like how much bandwidth is this hosting going to offer? Or how many horsepower does this car have? Or what's the processor speed of this computer? Features are really meaningless until they apply to somebody's life. A feature is what something does. A benefit is what it does for me. And it's benefits that motivate all of our choices. It's benefits that say, this is what the value is in my life. It's benefits that have meaning for me in my life, what the feature does for me. So what is the website going to do for me? Other than just being a website, what does it mean for me? What does it mean for my business? What does it mean personally in terms of peace of mind, security, income, looking good? What does it mean for my brand? What does it mean for my image, my self-image? These are real benefits. These are things that affect the person who's spending the money in a personal way. And they affect them on an emotional level as well. It's the benefits that motivate us. And quite often, we can then rely on features to justify our choice. But really, the sale is made on an emotional level in the world of benefits. And this applies not only to us and our own businesses when we're selling to clients, when we need to sell them the benefits to them. It also applies to our clients and their relationship with their own customers as well. So when you get away from thinking that we are selling a particular thing and we start to look at the way that that thing can benefit multiple people in multiple different ways, then we're getting into the world of what we're doing is we're selling solutions to problems. And fundamentally, that's what anything is. A car is a solution to the problem of getting around. Food is the problem of needing to eat. A can opener is a solution to the problem of how to get into cans without cutting your fingers off. Everything that we buy, everything that we invest in, is a solution to some kind of problem or need or opportunity. So anyone who comes to any website has a problem or a need or an opportunity that they need somehow to resolve. And our job is to help them to resolve that problem or that need or fill that opportunity for them. So what we need to do is we need to sell them a solution. We're not selling them the tool, we're selling them what the tool will do for them. So you have to draw a line, you have to bridge the gap between their need and the solution that you offer. And the key to this, as we've already started to look at in the, the art of selling, is to really understand what your prospects value. What is it that's important to them? And one really good way of doing that is just to say, what's important to you in your business right now? Why do you think you need a website? What do you hope to achieve from your website? A great question that I ask clients a lot in sales situations is, in six months' time, and this project has been a success, what will you be able to say to me when we're on the phone or when we're enjoying a glass of wine? What will you be able to say to me that indicates that the project has been a success? And the responses that you get should be quite meaningful. So it might say, you know, my boss comes up to me and says, great job on that. Or it might be that we've got more sales coming into our business. Or it might be we've had 10 leads in a month. 
So behind those success criteria, you'll be able to discover what the prospect actually values in your sale to them of a website. So it's not the website. It's not the website that they value. It's the image. It's the leads. It's the sales. It's something that that website is going to enable them to have that they don't have in their life right now. And that's the value. That's the profit for them. So when we get away from thinking about the products or the services that we sell, we can start to imagine that each product or each service can mean multiple things to multiple people. And the way that I think about that is in terms of propositions. A proposition is something that bridges their need to your solution. If you have one solution, which is website design, but there are dozens of people out there who need a website to give them something, You've got one service that you offer or one product, but multiple needs. Now, each of those needs can have its own corresponding proposition. And a proposition can be described in terms of this is how the website that I build for you is going to bring you business. This is how the logo that we design is going to improve your image in the marketplace. It's always the this is how. Here's a really good example. A man who walks into a hardware store to buy a quarter-inch drill bit doesn't need a quarter-inch drill bit. He needs a quarter-inch hole. The drill bit, the thing that he's actually spending money on, is a means to an end. It's a tool that's going to deliver him some other value. One other great advantage, when you stop talking about just your product, your service, is that not everybody is searching for that specific thing. Sure, there are going to be people who come to your website because they've done a search for website designer in your local area. That's great. But there are a lot of other people who are searching for a particular problem. They're looking for the thing that they need to resolve. They may not even know how to resolve it. So you may be able to talk to people who want a low cost marketing solution. You may find people who want logo design or brand development, or how can I generate leads for my business, or best way to promote my business. There are all kinds of problems for which a website can be a solution. And when you start talking about people's problems, their goals, these opportunities that, that they might be looking for, then you're going to be opening yourself up to a wider search engine market as well. So not just the people who are looking for a website, but the people who are looking for this is what I want to do. How can I do it? So remember, each product, each service can solve many needs. So instead of having a page that says website design and another page that says web development, another page that says e-commerce sites, you can have many landing pages which talk about promoting your business on the web, which talk about generating leads for your business. Yes, so you see how it works. And each of those bridges the gap from where they are right now, where this prospect is right now, saying, how do I reach more people for my business? How do I sell more of my stuff? How do I get more customers? Bridges the gap from that need right over to where you are, which is website. Website is your solution, but it's the proposition that leads them to the solution. So what we have to do is we have to flip our thinking. We have to stop thinking about just this service that we provide. We need to start thinking about, okay, what does this service do for people? What does this drill bit mean that people can do? And then we can start putting it out there. Then we can start creating these landing pages to say, okay, well, here is a solution for small businesses in this local area. Here is a solution for restaurants. Here is a solution for any kind of business that you can imagine, whoever your market is need to think about what is it that they are looking for and then how can you draw a line? How can you bridge between what they're looking for and a website? So you need to start thinking, thinking in reverse almost. Stop thinking about the end goal of yours and start thinking about, okay, where are my customers right now? So as we've said, each proposition has a market of its own. Each proposition speaks to a particular need, a particular desire, a particular problem. So each one of those is a different search market in its own. And we're going to be looking in a lot more depth over the next couple of weeks at how we can address these markets at different levels of depth as well. 
But for now, what we need just what we need to understand is we need to break out and broaden our message so we can reach more different people who are looking for more different things than just the thing that we think we offer. So here's how we used to think that people would access a website. They'd come in from the internet, they'd land on our homepage, they would visit the appropriate product or service page, and hopefully they'd be convinced and they would then complete the goal. They would buy, they would register, they would make contact. Okay. Now there's nothing wrong with this model. This model can work, but it's only a small part of what's possible on the web. So we like to think that people treat our website like they treat a restaurant. Like they'll walk in through the front door at the right time, they will sit down, they'll look at the menu, they'll decide what they want, and then they'll choose and then they'll go and pay. But the world isn't like that. As we've already seen, you know, people come come in through all kinds of pages. This is this is the long tail. So we, when you've got one landing page that you think is going to do the job of attracting your market, it's only going to be attracting one market. It's going to be only going to be attracting the market for what that page says it's about. Because that's all the search engines can match it to. So you actually need many more landing pages than this. Here's a different way of looking at the architecture of websites. In this model, for each product or service that you have, you can create multiple offerings or propositions. So for your website design service, you might have something as crude as website design for florists, web website design for dentists, website marketing solutions for small businesses. Okay, so this is just taking one step nearer to where the prospect is at this moment in time, rather than just saying web design. And when somebody lands on a page that says, I have a complete low cost website design offering or web marketing offering for small businesses just like yours, that page is gonna be so much more engaging than the page that says, yeah, we do web, web design for everybody. You know, come and tell us exactly what you need, we'll do it. A specific offering that seems to be targeted at that particular individual is going to be much more effective at getting their attention and really getting them to start believing that they've landed in the right place. And that's what it's all about. So over the next couple of sessions in traffic, we're going to look further and we're gonna develop this new model even further and then go deeper and deeper and deeper into new markets that right now you don't even know exist.